and sisters, the Lord is with you. And also with you. We continue listening to God speak to us from the gospel in the tradition of Mark. Glory to you, Lord. This morning, because we're tomorrow is Columbus Day, and we're also now referring to it as Indigenous Peoples Day. We're going to read from the First Nations Version translation of the New Testament. It's a little bit different, but that's okay. Jesus set out, and a man ran up to him and honored him. Good, good person, the man asked, what path will lead me to the life of the world to come that never fades away? Why do you call me good, Jesus said. There was only one who was good, the great spirit. You must know the instructions from the law giver. You are not to take the life of another, or be unfaithful in marriage, or to take what is not yours. Never lie or cheat a fellow human being, and always honor and respect your father and mother. The man answered, from my youth, I have followed all of these instructions. Jesus looked at the man with love and said, only one thing remains. Take all of your possessions, invite the poor of your village to come and have a giveaway. Then in the spirit world above, you will have many possessions waiting for you and leave everything behind and walk the road with me. The man's heart fell to the ground. He hung his head and walked away, for he had many possessions. Jesus then looked around at the people and said to his followers, Finding and walking the good road is a hard thing for ones who have many possessions. His followers could not believe what they were hearing. Jesus spoke again. Little children, he said, the ones who trust in their many possessions will have a hard time finding their way on the good road. It would be better for a moose to go through the eye of a needle. They shook their heads in wonder and looked at each other and said, how can this be? How can anyone walk the good road that sets all people free? He looked at them and said, it is not possible for weak human beings, but with the Creator's help, all things are possible. And this is the gospel, the good news of our salvation. And praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. By the words of the gospel, may our sins be blotted out. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so I guess we're keeping up with our tradition of not knowing what to expect. Anyway, uh, Dee Dee, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, we look forward to hearing about what went on. Uh, Robert, it's good to have you back. Father Peter, it's a joy. I'm glad you're here. And glad we're all here. Yeah. We listen to God's Word every week, and we usually don't hear a certain pronoun that we heard a lot of this morning. The pronoun of her. And according to tradition, the wisdom of God is usually referred to as female. The wisdom of, who is the wisdom? Solomon. In the Hebrew scripture. Solomon. Solomon. So the wisdom of Solomon. And what we hear is very simply the manner in which we're to treat one another the manner in which the presence of God comes to us in a very real way. The person in the gospel reading, I think we find this particular uh, reading also in Matthew. And the, the person comes to Jesus, and when I was a kid, many years ago, I think it was all of us, when we heard this reading, in the church then, in order to fulfill God's law, you had to, 
Father? Well, as the gospel said, give away everything that you had. Right. Live as poor as you could. Yeah. But many people looked at it as to say the only way to follow God was to put on a religious habit. And boy, have our eyes been opened. There's a uh, thing I read this morning. And, uh, you know, on the internet, there's a lot of stuff. And then there's a lot of stuff that's really good. The story about this man in the year 36 AD. <clears throat> he's sitting in his home, counting his money putting the gold coins from hand to hand. And his wife comes in and says, oh, what I've seen today is just incredible. <coughs> I saw John preaching. I heard Peter giving instructions and healing somebody in the temple. And he says to himself, that could have been me, because he was called by Jesus. He was called to be that missionary to others, to be that ambassador to other people. And he couldn't do it because he couldn't give up what he had. So there he is counting his coins and flipping them from hand to hand. And what could have been? How many of us what could have been as we age and we say to ourselves, maybe if only. And that goes for all of us. If only I had done this. If only this hadn't happened. But in God's wisdom, things happen as they're supposed to. Each one of us is called, not just certain people, but everybody is called. And we have to listen and open our ears and let the presence of God speak through us and to us. The wisdom of Solomon. Many things that we hear in life we sort of categorize, and well, I'll come to that when the time is right. And maybe the time will never be right. Because we don't allow God to be what God is supposed to be. Each one of us made in that image and likeness. When we look in the mirror, we might see a face that looks different than it did 10 years ago. But we're still looking at the face of God who lives within us and we're made in that image and likeness. We refer to wisdom as she. We refer to God as he. God has no gender. There's not a male God or a female God. There is a God within each one of us. And that presence of God takes the form of who we are every single day. So be open. Let God live in you in a special way. Let you become the Christ that other people need to see. The Christ that might be so foreign from some people. The Christ that lets us be who we are in God's eyes. Think about it, pray about it, and pray for me as I pray for you. And may God bless us and keep us. <clears throat> may God's face shine upon us and give us peace now and always. Amen. Amen.